Hello everybody and welcome to the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus where we tried to achieve 100%. In the last episode I did try and do the um, ultra hard challenge and in this episode, blah, 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 blah. In this episode I'm going to give that a go again. Um, just a disclaimer here, just before you guys start to notice some weirdness, this is me recording it after the fact. Unfortunately the entire episode recorded with no voice audio. I don't know how it happened but apparently my mic got muted at some point during the recording, but it was very early on and the vast majority uh, majority of it has no mics. I cut out the bit that, that had me talking because it just didn't really work. And I've, um, I'm have i gonna show you the actual full completed run. Um, but yeah, here we are. I'm just basically restarting, trying to get a decent item, looking for something that will maybe fit in to this run. Ultra hard, if you don't know, basically means you have all the curses you don't get any HP from any sources apart from items, and um, every single enemy is a champion. It's pretty difficult, it's pretty difficult, and also all boss fights are doubled. But here, as you can see, is the start of me going, wow, okay, this run's gonna be awesome. It's a, it's a genuine shame you didn't get to see my genuine reaction for this, because, yeah, I was pretty happy. And then with this item room, I was even more happy, because I got the Rosary, which is one of the only items in the game that gives us that that much HP. There's not many items you can get from the chess rooms. Sorry, the chess rooms. This is an end of the dungeon. There's not many items that you can get from uh, item rooms that give you that much HP. So I was really happy about that. But on top of that, I realised that Rosary um, guarantees that you find the Bible at some point in your run. It just swaps out. It adds the Bible to all item pools and basically guarantees that it shows up. And that's normally a bad thing. Normally you don't want that unless you're looking for bookworm. Because the Bible's just a bad item. But, in this situation, it lets us kill, kill Mum's foot and Mum's heart in a single hit. In a single press of a button. Saving us a lot of time and a lot of hardship. Especially on the Mum's heart fight when um, we're taking double damage. And that health is so much more precious. So, obviously this first room here I knew was going to get hit. I could just see it coming. Double monster in a tiny room. Not happening. Uh, but he had to take the divorce papers. Obviously, I can't fill up that heart, and I decide that it's better to go for angel deals than it is to go to, for deal the devils. Because trading away HP is already risky business, and doing it when we don't know what we're getting is just not gonna be okay. Unless, unless there's some way I could know what I was getting, deal the devils are almost never worth it. Unless I have an absolute abundance of HP. But in this challenge, you never really can have an abundance of HP. It just, it just. It doesn't really work like that, so I decided to go for angel deals and hope to get some decent ones. And we did, we got some okay ones, you'll see those as they come. I'm not going to spoil the run any further, I'm just, I want to keep it, I wanted to keep this one uploaded just because of how, how good it was. I didn't want to try and re-record it, and obviously, um, with the challenge that it was, it's just enjoyable to see the look that I got, especially on these first few floors, I, I, I was really really happy i'm just super super annoyed the audio didn't record it's really upsetting um i started to see a lot of these enemies and like newer enemies that seem to be part of the deliverance mod well they definitely are um but something really cool about them is that not only uh are the new enemies it seems that deliverance adds a lot of floor specific enemies like that enemy there i don't believe that one shows up on any other floor that one there all show up on the flooded basement um or flooded caves whichever, whichever this one is um and I think that's really cool. There's not actually many of those in the base game. Uh, enemies that only show up on certain floors. Obviously, you get the enemies that only show up on the womb. And, oh my god. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, and, uh, and later on, because obviously they, they need to be harder enemies to be taking double damage. But enemies such as this. But this is the first encounter I have one of these enemies where I don't kill it instantly. And I start to notice that they're a little more tricky than I've been uh, assuming. Now, one of the hardest things you saw um, in the previous episode about the challenge is that um, you have the uh, the curse where it like moves you to different rooms, uh, and it's very disorientating. And finding the item rooms on some floors just took me forever. I could not find them whatsoever. It was really, really just painful to uh, to experience. But there you go. Like you see, this guy absolutely wrecking our face, getting rid of our burn heart. But like I said, there's basically no way of us filling that burn heart, so it's not terrible. The damage is still not great, but it's not the worst. And here, here I get 20-20. So, if you were thinking, oh my god, you got really lucky with Mum's knife early on. Yeah, now it does double damage. So, 
Even better. Gets even better. And I walk into a fly there. Real smart move. We get hit again. And I'm just taking absolutely baffling amounts of damage. And I was getting really upset and annoyed. Um, but I was okay because I had 20-20. I can't remember what this item room was, actually. Um, I think it was Jacob's Ladder? Is it Jacob's Ladder? Yeah, Jacob's Ladder. Um, and... That, unfortunately, does not synergize at all with Mum's Knife. There is a mod over on the Steam Workshop that enables, like, to, it to synergize with other, other items like Brimstone and um, Mum's Knife. Which, I mean, it seems like a decent mod, but I don't want to over, um, overfill my games with mods. I kind of did that in my first Isaac series. And although it was enjoyable for me, I think a lot of the viewers kind of got confused on what was real uh, content and what was modded content. And so I decided with this one. Now that we're like 20, I think it was like episode 26 I did it on, Deliverance was a good mod to add, just because it's like a fleshed out DLC more than it is, um, more than it is just a simple small mod pack. It's a very, very fleshed out, well thought out, um, like very law fitting, basically DLC. Like I was saying in this video, I would pay for this mod. Like it's so surprising and like amazing. Here we get the Bible look. Uh, surprising and amazing that, that people would make this for free and publish it for free and maintain it for free It's just people just love this game so much and they're willing to they're willing to share that with everyone It's just it's just brilliant. I love the uh, the Isaac modding community and here the screw doesn't really make much of a difference But we get our first angel deal and we get angelic prism, which is pretty cool. Basically when you shoot through it it does the whole um, spectrum spectrum of light and With mum's knife it works pretty well. You can get some pretty long-range projectiles out of it uh, the prism is actually an item that uh, came from the modding community. Uh, it was created and posted onto the mod workshop and then added into the game officially uh, by Edmund in one of the booster packs. The booster pack thing, like the whole idea with that, I really liked the idea, but a few, there was quite a few problems with it in my opinion. Um, for one, I, I used the Bible here just to get over and get that just yes. in case we get anything decent. We can't get HP from it or anything. Um, that two of hearts card is going to be the best thing for us in terms of cards. Um, but yeah, like, there's a few problems with it in my, in my opinion, but basically one was, uh, that obviously the, he said there was going to be one a month and there was nowhere near to one a month. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said one a month, but he, he said they were going to be much more often than they were, which obviously didn't end up working out, which I can't blame him for. He's a busy man. He put a lot of time into Isaac already, so I, I wasn't that bothered about that. But the bigger thing I was bothered about is the, the mods that were picked and added to the game. Like, although they did have to fit lore and make sure they fit into the theme of the game, like, that was a big thing about it, so some mods just outright weren't, weren't able to be added to the game. It's like, they were all curated, like, curated and chosen by him, which is alright considering, like, he made the game so he can best feel what fits into the game's lore. Uh, but, I think it would have been way better to do a, some sort of voting system, or even if not a voting system, just have, have a system in place where it's like, Oh, the top up voted over this amount of time gets added. And here, I really start to kick off. I get Seraphim, which gives us a HP up, along with me getting a, the Halo, which gives us a HP up. Um, and then we also get a stat upgrade and flight. So yeah, I was really happy about this. Also, I love the way that Seraphim looks with um, with our little glasses. Because Seraphim gives you no eyes and like no face. And now we've just got like glasses with these little glowing blue tints underneath from Jacob's Ladder. I just thought it looked so cool. Um, but yeah, so I really think the booster packs could have been a lot better. Um, I think a lot of people had a prop had problems with them as well, especially considering the way the booster packs worked, where they were um, they were taken from the mod workshop and recreated in a different language, a different coding language, and that led to a lot of inconsistencies. Like there was a few mods that were added. One of um, one of them I remember was called the door stop. It's a trinket that's in the game now, where basically what it would do is. It would mean the last uh, door you entered would stay open so you can leave that room if you want to, which is actually a really good trinket. But in the mod version, it had a really nice sprite and it worked fine. In the booster pack version when it first released, the sprite was pretty hideous. I don't know why it was so bad, but also it crashed the game so much. Like, if you walked into a Deal the Devil and left the Deal the Devil um, after with Doorstop, it would crash your game. And then every now and again, certain rooms would just crash your game, and it was basically unusable. And then the same goes for a few of the other booster, later booster packs. Um, we had items that, like, the sprite work was just, like, way, way below quality for the game, and also below quality for the actual mod that was, uh, that was already given. Like, they could have just 
ask permission. That's another big thing actually about the booster packs. When when they uh, added a added an item to the game, there was no context to the original creator at all. So like one of the one of the big examples, there's a mod called Better Bombs. I actually use it uh, in this playthrough. Um, we get the farewell stone here, which is actually pretty good. It allows us to change all of our bread hearts into soul hearts at a two to one ratio. So I kept that on me for later on. But yeah, um, so. What was I saying? Um, oh yeah, we have a mod on called Better Bombs, and what that does is uh, it actually adds more synergy visuals for bombs. If you have more bomb items that work together, it actually the visuals show that, whereas in the base game they didn't, or at least they didn't very much. Um, and Better Bombs got added to the booster pack, but it got added without asking the creator, and so what happened is it got added to the game, and then the, the creator updated it with a huge, absolutely enormous update that added way, way, way more visual synergies, like a day later. And so, basically as soon as it was added to the game, you just still had to use the mod anyways, because it added so much more content, uh, and that was kind of, that was kind of annoying. Um, I didn't, I didn't really, uh... I don't really get why they did that, and then, then obviously it was never updated either. It really should have been updated. Uh, but yeah, like I think I think it was a good idea in theory. It just it didn't really work in practice. They should have they should have had more plans for it and more like better ways to execute it and, and create curate. I keep saying curate, curate the mods that are being chosen and things like that. But I think it's good that a game would add a way to add, by the way, Magic Mush. Um, it's, I think it's good that a game would add a way to, um, to add modded items to the game officially. Not many games do that, so I can commend him for that, definitely. And especially considering not many games do it, it is, it is harder to get right than you would think. So I don't particularly mind in that sense. Uh, but here we are onto the womb. You saw me kill Mum in just one hit there. Feeling pretty darn good about that. Uh... Like, just being able to, to decimate things in one hit. It just feels good. It just feels good. And then this floor, obviously, is just a regular old floor. Um, but it, it, it is an XL floor, so we'll be fighting the, um, the mum fight on this floor as well, which is really nice. Um, if I had a, uh, a card on this floor where I could skip to the next floor, I probably would use it because you'd be able to skip two bosses for the price of one. But I think I end up just sticking with uh, the Bible and doing it that way because whatever the first boss is can't be that hard. Um, normally, the first boss on Womb isn't usually too bad. I was, I was shitting it here. Gerdy is a bastard. Luckily, he didn't get a chance to move and we were okay. But I was kind of pooing myself there. I, I, was, I was a bit worried. Just a little bit worried. Just a little bit. Right, keep moving on. But yeah, um, at this point, I'd, I sort of, I sort of accepted and realised that this is, this is our lot for mods, uh, for mods for items. We're probably not going to get many more, and if we do, they're not going to be anything outstanding. I doubt. I, I, I was really sad at that miss there as well. I like, I only recorded this like yesterday, so I'm just remembering, uh, remembering my feelings during the time and sort of what I was trying to talk about in, in the commentary at the time. Obviously, a lot of it I don't remember. I don't, do you know, that's something I do want to talk about, actually, while, while we got chance. I don't get a chance to talk about this very often. But, like, it's so weird when, when commenting. I don't know how many of you have done any commentary for gaming before. But, especially with the videos I do, being the length they are, uh, I could literally speak for, like, an hour and a half, two hours straight, and finish the recordings, and not remember a single thing about what I talked about at all. Have literally no idea what I've talked about. Like, it's, it's really weird. I'll just, I'll just be compl I'll completely blank what I've said and just be, be like, what the fuck? Um, how did I fill that much time? What, what important things could I possibly said that filled all that time? Here we've got the rotary bead as well for extra angel chance. I don't think I get any more angel, uh, angel deals throughout this run, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe I do. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Get the virus there as well. The virus is nice because it gives us the chance for black hearts, but on the ultra hard challenge, health can't drop, so it technically doesn't do anything for us. It's like uh, one of the runs that I did before this, like one of the ones I cut out. I actually, um, I actually got Gimpy, and I was like, oh yeah, Gimpy. Then I realised that Gimpy doesn't do anything because normally it gives enemies a chance to drop half hearts, and when you get a hit, it gives you a chance to drop a soul heart. But health can't drop, so Gimpy does actually nothing. Uh, this room here, I was pretty confident I was going to get hit, but I, fi I figured out that if you have flight, you can just sit over the top of the rocks and get pretty easy kills on these guys. And then this guy just decided to move out and rush down. 
But we're getting near to the boss here. I think this floor was possibly my worst in terms of mapping. I'm pretty sure. I, obviously, I can't see the maps. So I couldn't tell you for, for sure. But I'm pretty sure I went to every single room available. Like, I really, really just cocked it up and went every wrong way. Um, I think I ended up looping back around to the... Um, to the first room, like the first room that I started in, and back around again, and oh god, it was, it was just a whole kerfuffle. I got so lost. It's why um, I was actually talking about this in the video as well. I remember. Um, I don't think the curses in Isaac are actually that good. I think they're um, designed very strangely. Like there's there's a few curses that like, yeah. They make a little bit of difference. Like, Curse of Darkness, it makes a bit of gameplay difference, but it doesn't hinder you too much. And then, I like Curse of the Blind, where you can't see your items. That one's interesting as well. Um, but, like, Curse of the Maze, Curse of the Lost, they're just horrible. <laughs> they're just horrible. They don't add any fun to the game. They just take away from it, and it's sad. And having all of these on at once is just... It was just soul-crushing. But here we go. We're sort of making our way back to the starting room now. I can't... Do I play that chest? I might play that chest. We have 12 keys. I don't see why. I don't see why not. If I don't, I'm gonna shout at myself. I might as well. I could get an item from it. Do it. Do it. You. You moron. What are you doing? Come on. Got another chance. Ah. Oh. Come on. He's got one more chance. One more chance. Nope. Nope. He's a moron. Well done, Tail. You fucked up. Yeah, them chests can be opened as many times as it lets you, and um, obviously use the key each time, and a lot of the time it does give you an item in the end, so I don't know why I didn't play that. Here you can see Curse of the Maze screwing with me, but here we finally find the boss, which I figure out was basically two rooms to the left from the room we started in, which is really depressing, considering how far I travelled. But yeah, I was a bit scared on this boss fight, um, obviously as you can see there's a lot going on, so I was a bit, I was kind of crapping myself. Ah, <laughs> you get it, because they're made of poop. Um, but taking out these big guys quickly was kind of a key and as soon as I did that I was able to get rid of most of them And here's another place where I thought I was gonna take damage. I was in back into the corner. That was all right And there you go. Look, yeah, as soon as I got rid of those big guys That's kind of the key to making that work a bit more HP up. I was loving that loving that and getting mum's heart killed straight away It's so much better here. I actually was a bit um, sort of conflicted on whether to go up or down uh, and then I realized that I haven't unlocked the Polaroid yet I've only unlocked the negatives so I had to go down because uh, one thing that I've realized on this um, this ultra hard challenge is that you are not meant to do the ultra hard challenge when you don't have this much unlocked I didn't even have the d6 Isaac's meant to start with the d6 I didn't even have that so I did it without the d6 I did it without a bunch of items unlocked, which actually helped us in the end, because we, it meant we got Mum's knife, which would be a much less likely thing to happen. Uh, but also, we didn't even have the Polaroid, so we couldn't even go up and get the four extra item room chests um, in the ch in the chest. So, we got unfortunate there. But honestly, I do find um, the first floor shawl to be a lot easier than, um, than the uh, cathedral. Uh, here is one of the munchers that you give it an active item and it gives you one of the uh, items from uh, Deliverance and I just decided it'd be a good idea considering we don't need our Bible anymore And we get one of the best items we could have possibly gotten Basically items rib whenever you first hit an enemy it drops a knife on them that does double your damage So it's basically like having one fly for every single enemy that you fight and it has a really really nice visual So I was really happy to have that especially for room clearing it just makes kills come along that much quicker uh, especially with uh, what we've got going on and it really really helps out in a little bit. You'll 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 see you'll see Also, I kept having this strange bug where the um The display wasn't showing me what cards were on the um on the external hood I think I mess up the uh, grenade here. I'm pretty sure yeah, I do but the guy just as quick anyways like look at that beautiful and Satan just gets absolutely demolished Absolutely demolished. He couldn't even he couldn't even and there you go. As soon as the feet come in, they stand no chance. They stand no chance. And there, oh my god, did I crap myself. Because if you don't go and beat Mega Satan, you can't beat this challenge. And I pooed myself when that happened. I was like, oh my god, no, please. So, 
here, I, uh, I go for my red chests, I get an item straight away, and do you know what? I just go, that could be anything. It could even be cursed eye. I'm not even gonna try it. And I go into the Mega Satan fight with respectable amounts of HP, and we also have the Farewell Stone card um, to help us out. Now, I know some people may think that this isn't legit, isn't a legit ultra hard, because I did it with modded, uh, like modded items and things like that, but honestly, if you think about it, the only modded item that's making a big difference to my play here is the Farewell Stone, and I haven't even used it yet. Like, I'm pretty sure I, I, I do use it, but only to only be, just because. Like, I, I, I could have done it without using it. Yeah, wa watch, watch the knives go off here. That's what I was talking about. The knives just do brilliant damage. Really, really nice for us. I loved it. I loved it. But yeah, here we, here we are coming to a close here. And I did the, like, I'm not only happy that I, 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 like, got this far, I made it in a pretty good time, 17 minutes, like, that's pretty damn good. Obviously, you're doing two floors every time at once, so that does mean it's going to be quicker anyways, because you've got XL uh, floors, but even still, I was pretty happy with myself. And here's where I started to get a little bit more worried about my HP. My HP is at 4 now, so I can only take 4 hits, and then once he, once he entered his second phase, I was like, right, we're done here. We're done. Well, second phase is actually easier, and there we go, I used the Farewell Stone just to get a little bit more HP, but as you can see, I didn't actually need it at all. I get the kill, and Mega Satan is down, ultra hard challenges beaten, in about four attempts. Four or five attempts, I think it took, and I was very, very happy with that. It's one of the hardest challenges in the game, something that most people can't even do, and I'm, I'm very, very happy to say that I did it. But yes, I, I'm sorry that I lost the original audio, but I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, sort of over-commentary, and I'll see you guys in the next one.